It is a really exciting project. We are definitely going to try and do things innovatively. That is the way I want to set this program up and I think that we can have a really big impact for the whole life cycle of fusion, but also we expect to have an impact on the way that fission uh, power plants and facilities are decommissioned. The Jet Decommissioning and Repurposing program is so named because we're doing the decommissioning and also the repurposing. So there's two aspects to the repurposing. The first is repurposing uh, equipment and there are some very valuable pieces of equipment that we will try to use. Of course, they're a bit end of life, uh, but we'll see whether we can repurpose the equipment that has been making jet work. And the second part is the buildings and infrastructure that have enabled jet to work. So we have a lot of land that jet has used, and we're going to be repurposing some of these buildings for fusion applications, um, for our own needs, but also for private companies who might want to come onto the site. Decommissioning is a, is a political act, and, so, uh, and, it, and it's expensive. So for those two reasons, we uh, are engaged heavily with the government and they're going to be funding this programme. And it's going to be a large amount of money in order to uh, decommission the, the, the jet facility and repurpose the buildings and the equipment. So engaging with government and explaining why this is important as part of the, the whole development of a fusion, fusion ecosystem, and then also showing the adjacencies, the near-term impact from this program is a vital role. A key part of delivering a program like uh, the Jet Decommissioning and Repurposing program is the team. And I mean the team all the way from government right through to the people who are operating the machines doing doing the day-to-day -day work in the jet buildings. And, and, and we separate that into sort of governance and then ov obviously program delivery and program management. And the, the key there is to align the two together so that actually that whole team understands what the purpose is and they understand their different roles and it, it works together. Decommissioning is quite hard to predict. Whilst you're building a facility at the, be the beginning, you've got a, a through life plan the further you try and envisage the future through that plan, the more difficult it, it, it becomes because it's further into the future. I think decommissioning as well is right at the end of a, a plant's life when some components are tired. And it's difficult for off staff to envisage a life beyond the point at which it switches off. So my initial observations were, were less programmatic and more cultural. I mean, um, you can really tell um, a sense of love for jet on arrival and it's defined the authority, it's defined the site. It's a symbol of driving fusion forward, a symbol of international collaboration. So the idea of a programme to take it to pieces um, must be very difficult for some. And it's been difficult to establish momentum, but I'm really starting to see uh, people be pulling behind the mission. It's a really ambitious, inspiring idea, the way that we'll decommission. So use of robotics, use of detritiation to um, reduce the cost and the impact of our waste streams. And I can see the team starting to pull their expertise in that decommissioning direction. The real options when we come to decommissioning jet really revolve around how we treat the intermediate level waste. So the most challenging components which are inside the vessel, how we recover those and how we store them and onward process them. But there's a set of non-discretionary activities that also need to be done. So there's a huge number of auxiliary buildings and auxiliary systems which we need to close down. So I've tried to avoid the approach of new director, new direction. I think the strategy, the end state, the goal is uh, remains fixed and it's a really inspiring mission. I think we've had to make some approach uh, changes to the scheduling, um, largely to do with that cost momentum that I talked about from the end of jet operations, and also to deliver a sort of a, a pragmatic, practical plan to get to the innovative stages. During the last year, we have uh, completed all the remote handling preparation uh, for uh, an entry into the vessel to perform the sample retrieval shutdown. So this is a, a really important part of the JDR program through which we're recovering samples from the vessel to help characterise it while also completing the JET scientific campaign by gathering important data for the physicists. We're also developing the longer term strategy for the disassembly of the, of the tokamak 
uh, which will be done in a number of stages uh, in the coming years. So that's a, quite a complex piece of work itself to uh, reverse engineer the, the tokamak. We're also charged to reduce the footprint of the jet estate uh, to enable a number of facilities to be repurposed for other scientific uh, experiments. Uh, one of these that we're working on at the moment is uh, the J4 and J5X power supplies area and this is currently being decommissioned to enable a new project called uh, Liberty to take occupancy during the, the latter part of 2025. It's not all about jet. It's uh, it's um, there is jet, the the tourist, the machine itself, but there's always also the uh, surrounding areas, such as the 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 walls or the the support buildings. Uh, so we expect different uh, kind of waste uh, from uh, concrete, uh, metal, uh, plastic waste, etc. And um, the, the the UK legislation uh, splits the different waste streams into um, different categories. So we have the intermediate level waste. So this will be basically uh, everything which is inside the, the donut, uh, inside the, the torus. We will have uh, low activity uh, waste. So um, uh, that with a lower content of activation products and tritium, which is our main radionuclide. Uh, and we'll have uh, low activity, low level waste, so it's even less. And then out of scope regulation, so basically not radioactive. So we need to, to, to make sure that we, uh, we, we split the, the waste in the, in the correct category because the uh, waste disposal route will differ. Um, in terms of tonnage, we expect between 230 uh, and 250 tons of intermediate level waste, um, six to 7,000 tons of low activity and uh, low level waste. And as a function of um, what we do with them, we may expect up to 150,000 tonnes of outer scope regulation, so basically non-radioactive waste. I head up the Office of Site Management and our department is in charge of keeping the decommissioning site safe and operational and we also support the other functions within decommissioning, such as decommissioning and handling and the waste stream. We're very much the gel between everything, so we've got that core group of um, jet operations staff that's come with us um, and we do a lot of the core activities like ensuring that the plant is in a good operational state and it's been a very collaborative effort in shutting the vessel down and now making those cost savings but also making the decommissioning site um, fit, fit for the future. But we do other things that facilitate the other functions, such as for sample retrieval, my team are the ones that open the doors to the vessel that allow the remote handling equipment in. We are leading on creating lay down space as we start to take bits of plant apart. And my team also provide the worksite managers that are leading on keeping the work sites for decommissioning safe. The, the development programme for the remote handling system uh, had to initially look at the legacy uh, remote handling that was originally built and delivered to site in the 1980s. So what we had to do was go through quite an extensive period of time to understand the leg legacy design interface new capabilities into that and then design a, a completely new uh, wiring and network infrastructure, new control system, quite extensive development work packages and then actually retrofit that into a, a legacy mechanical structure. Uh, that itself took several hundred thousand hours of engineering and technician time. So we have a lot of materials, um, Inconel, stainless steel, um, uh, carbon fiber composite, fi uh, tungsten and beryllium. And the detritiation uh, R&D project aims to demonstrate the technical feasibility of detritiating those, but also to establish some sort of recipes. So basically, what would be the optimal operating conditions to obtain the result we want to declassify the waste 
whilst uh, saving energy. Characterization consists in uh, assessing the level of um, radioactivity of the, the, the different waste we're going to be we're going to be producing and the different areas they come from. So basically, what we have to do is to map all the areas we want to uh, decommission. Um, choose representative samples of uh, every area and analyze very thoroughly. Putting JET into a safe state took many months and involved the collaboration of numerous people. There was many mechanical and electrical systems that needed to be shut down to make the vessel safe, along with associated plans such as the cryogenics. JET is now constantly ventilated and the off-gas tritium is sent across the bridge to AGHS where it's managed appropriately. Previously people were very very focused on the technical uh, achievements of, of JET, uh, 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 process waste um, timely uh, and basically yet yeah, enable the science to happen. And we're still doing that but conversely to what happened before we, we really have to be mindful of uh, the, the tasks we, ca we, ca we carry out and the, the, the costs involved. So one of the big success is to have been able in a few months to transition from a very, very sciencey environment to a still very sciencey environment but led by a, a, pro a programmatic mindset. Basically, work with a plan, set up a plan, monitor it. I've been forming a team whilst we've been in a very challenging period of shutting JET down. And many of the staff that used to work on JET, of course, have gone off to do other exciting things. And um, I've had to rely on a lot of goodwill from those people. They've been very generous with their time. They've interacted with my team and given us, us advice when we've needed it. We have facilities to process the waste, but they are not fit for purpose for uh, the decommissioning activities. So we will have to design new facilities to overcome this challenge. We also produce soft waste as part of uh, decommissioning activities. So, so soft waste basically is plastics, uh, personal protective equipment that the operator wears and etc. And for every tonne of hard waste we process, we produce between 150 to 300 kilos of these plastic waste. And we've got to do something about them. So there is an existing route at the, at the moment that we absolutely need to optimize. So uh, we are currently carrying out detritiation experiments on segregated software. So several, we sort the softwares by type and, and we process them separately in, in, a, in, in a drone that we heat up. We collect the tritium and what we are aiming for is to marry the detritiation process to the characterization process. So basically as a function of what we have the tritium that we have recovered, we can infer the, uh, the, the, the remaining activity of the waste. For my team, the next 12 months is very much about preparation for future decommissioning. We've got some small decommissioning work going on already, but we are going to be preparing to make both the site and the team fit for the future. So we're learning well, finding more and more that UKAEA needs to partner very closely with industry to, to deliver the programme uh, successfully in the coming years. As we progress through decommissioning of uh, the jet machine, uh, we're seeing this as a lead and learn programme. And in doing so, we've already done quite an extensive R&D uh, uh, project to identify new and novel technologies such as uh, cold cutting for the diverter coils where we'll deploy a, a large scale um, circular saw, probably around about a one metre diameter uh, cutter to remove the diverter coils and then a, a robotically deployed and operated laser cutting system to, to remove the structures from within the vessel. Those technologies have a lot of applications elsewhere. 
So those non-discretionary activities, what we call the decommissioning basics, getting those right will buy us the financial headroom to, to explore some of the more innovative approaches. And the authority's got some amazing capabilities. So you look at its investment in robotics and the development of mascot and the booms that operate inside the vessel, the materials research facility, understanding the materials that will come out of JET and which comprise all of its external structures and also its tritium handling capability. If we can merge all of that together to approach waste in a completely different way, I think that's where we will make the biggest difference, both to fusion, but also to adjacent sectors. Everything's currently on track. Short-term goals are, as I said, to get the sample retrieval campaign finished, and then we'll know what we're dealing with, and then we can come up with a plan that will be uh, understandable to our regulator, the Environment Agency, and to the government. And then medium term, we've probably got to build some facilities because we're going to be creating uh, an amount of waste that we have to deal with. So that's a key point. And then longer term, we're going to get into you know day-to-day -day operations where we're pulling things apart and they're going to be disappearing down the right waste routes in the right way. A key word that is going to um, yeah is going to be written into everything we do is sustainability, and I think that's something that the world is wrestling with and maybe i should finish on this point that actually we're no longer in a position where fire and forget is is possible we have to think about whole life cycle we have to think about sustainability so repurposing recycling as part of an everyday action in these big programs